Hello, my name is Tom Zagon and I work for the Canadian Ice Service. The Ice Service is part of the Department of Environment and Climate Change Canada and our mandate is to provide the most accurate and timely information on ice and icebergs in Canada's navigable waters. Here, I want to introduce you to how we're using radar remote sensing in our operations. I want to start with a brief historical review because remote sensing has played a critical role in the monitoring of a country as large as Canada. But it's not only Canada's landmass that has benefited from this activity. As you may know, Canada has the longest coastline in the world that borders on three oceans, the Atlantic, the Arctic and the Pacific Ocean. The maritime zones of Canada cover over 7 million square kilometers and sea ice is present in these waters to various extents throughout the year. The ice forms an important part of the natural environment. Northern communities use it as a platform for travel. However, the presence of ice also restricts the motion of vessels and presents a hazard to shipping. So it's important that ice information be delivered to maritime users as quickly as possible so that navigational decisions can be taken based on the latest data. Ice is a very dynamic environment and ice information can become obsolete within hours. So floating ice is present in Canadian waters throughout the year. The area of coverage undergoes a seasonal cycle with a minimum extent in September and a maximum extent in March. And the difference between the minimum and the maximum is around 4 million square kilometers, a massive change that occurs every six months. The most effective way for us to monitor this vast and dynamic environment is by way of remote sensing. Historically, we have done this through aircraft observations, either visually by trained ice observers or by using imaging radar. The ice conditions change relatively quickly and aircraft observations are not able to cover even a small part of this vast area. We found that satellite-based remote sensing is ideally suited to monitoring our marine environment. Initially, this was done using optical satellite sensors, but they had operational limitations first and foremost cloud cover, and also winter darkness uh, in the northern latitudes of our hemisphere. It has really been the coming of age of space-based synthetic aperture radar that finally made the monitoring of sea ice viable in all of Canada's waters. SAR is a very practical and reliable surveillance and mapping tool. Incidentally, the very first image of Canada's RadarSat constellation mission was collected along Canada's east coast in June of 2019. And you can still see on the image the extensive sea ice cover in that area, even during the early summer months. Polar waters experience long hours of darkness and there's almost no optical data available in the Arctic during the northern winter between November and February. In addition, fog and clouds are often present throughout the year. With SAR imagery, darkness and atmospheric conditions are of no concern for sea ice monitoring, which means that we can utilize every successfully acquired image for showing the current ice conditions. That is why space-based synthetic aperture radar is the mainstay of ice services around the world. Aside from Canada, there are other countries in ice services that, are, that also rely on using remote sensing to monitor ice conditions in their jurisdictions. These include Denmark for Greenlandic waters, the United States, Russia, many of the Baltic countries, and countries that are stakeholders in Antarctic waters. The main product for conveying ice information is the ice chart that takes the information contained on a SAR image and presents it in a format that is easily interpreted by mariners. We call these charts the egg chart because of the specific sea ice information that is encoded and the oval numerical symbols. These then refer to a specific ice covered area on the same chart. Here is an example of such an operational ice chart for the Gulf of St. Lawrence on March 1st of 2020. Much of the information encoded in the chart was derived from the analysis of the latest satellite radar imagery. The meteorological organizations that produce ice charts form part of what is called the International Ice Chart Working Group or IICWG. They promote the coordination of operational sea ice and iceberg information services to better meet the needs of their national and international maritime clients.